guys, it is username Kate and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm filming a walk around video on Honda's naked litre bike, the CB1000R Black Edition. You have a lot of other manufacturers with their litre naked bikes that went down the really sporty, aggressive styling route. Well, Honda have brought something slightly different to the table with a Neo Sport Cafe styled 1000. This is the black edition, so it has a few nice style and exercises and a few technical things that come on the bike that the standard CB1000R doesn't come with. But I'm gonna talk you through this bike, as always, talk you through the specs, the weight, the height, how it feels to push around. And of course, we're gonna end with an insurance quote. So without further ado, Let's take a look at this bad boy. Okay, first off, I just wanna say, I think Honda have done an amazing job with this styling. Just look at it for a moment. It really doesn't look like your sort of generic naked 1000s. It does really have that sort of beefed up retro look. I love the stumpy back end. I love the single sided swing arm. I love its blacked out nature. I love the little machined bits on the engine and on the wheels, which I'll zoom in and show you in more detail. But I just really think that Honda nailed the styling of this bike. Let's have a look at it from the front. And of course, let's have a look at it from the back. Okay, so starting with the engine on the CB1000R Black Edition, you have an awesome 1000cc engine. Technically, it's a 999cc, but we're not going to get too pedantic. It is a inline four, as you would expect from Honda, and it pumps out a pretty respectable 143.5 brake horsepower. So because this is the Black Edition, you just have that gorgeous machined, accent on the engine which just looks really really beautiful quality and it isn't just on the engine where you'll find those bits you have them here and you also have them on the wheels as well on the spokes which I just think is a really class touch now back to the engine 104 newton meters of torque you know it's not bad for a Revy in line 4 so again, because this is the black edition, you've got the black four into one exhaust, black headers down to a black link pipe. And then up here, you have the black exhaust. So yeah, it's all blacked out, looks really aggressive. And I know some people will not agree with me on this one, but for a standard can, I think it looks pretty, pretty neat. So I'm just gonna zoom in on this wheel because I think it is a proper standout feature of the CB1000R. It's a really meaty looking wheel and the single sided swing arm just cleans it right up from this side and just makes it look really aggressive in my opinion. Right, so let's speak about suspension on this bike. Honda didn't scrimp. They loaded it up with a shower suspension front and rear at the front, if we take a closer look, we have 43mm Showa upside down black forks. One thing that I really like about the black edition, if we go down here, you actually have the black stanchions as well, which just really adds to that aggressive sort of Batman bike look. And then if we move around to the rear, you've got a mono shock, again Showa, and it is preload and rebound adjustable. So if we move round to the brakes and we have a look at the stopping power on this bike. If we have a look at the front brakes, you've got the twin discs, 310 mil thick. And then you've got the Tokiko radial mounted caliper. If we take a look at the rear brake, again, the caliper's kind of hiding, but this one is a Nissan caliper and you've got a brake disc with a thickness of 256 mil. 
Okay, so looking at the rubber on this bike, they've put some really good tyres on it from factory. You've got the Michelin Power 5s, which are a great sporty tyre and offer a lot of grip. With this being the black edition, you do get a few little bits and bats extra on this bike that you don't get with a non-black edition. So you get those lovely highlighted exposed metal accents. You have them on here as well, on the wheels. Obviously you've got the blacked out styling, so you've got the black exhaust, you've got the black front forks. You've got this lovely detail here. You do have this lovely seat cowl with the black edition that you don't have with the non-black edition. And you have this lovely little fly screen as well. And then on the tech side of things, the black edition does come with a quick shifter and auto blipper. So you can go down the box as well as up the box, which I'm an absolute sucker for. Okay, so if we switch her on, just love how reflective this tank is. If we have a look at the lighting on this bike, so at the front you have the LED light and you have the indicators that are permanently on, just so that you have extra visibility when you're riding round. And then on the back you have this LED light as well. One of the things that I like about this headlight is I feel like it's unmistakably Honda. Like you see that teardrop light and you know that it's a CB coming towards you. If you guys are frequent watchers of my channel, you will know that I am a five foot four human with a 29 inch inside leg measurement. So hopefully that will give you guys a little bit of an insight and a reference point when I sit on this bike as to how tall it actually is. The seat height on this bike is 830 mil. So whenever I hear anything over 820, I immediately think, oh, it's a little bit on the tall side. So I'm just going to sit on the bike and we can get an idea as to how tall it actually is. Okay, so when I sit on this bike, I'm going to do what I normally do. Stand up and I'm going to make it so that I'm trying to put both my feet down. Now, as you guys can see, I'm sat as far forward on the tank as I can and I am on my tiptoes. So I kind of expected that with a seat height of 830 mil. But if you guys watch some of my other videos, you'll know that I'm not one of these people that feels like they have to have both feet down when they come to a stop. I don't really care about that. As long as I can kind of make a triangle with the bike, the wheels and my foot, I'm happy. So if I'm to put one foot down, again, I can sort of stop at lights, and it's down. The weight isn't so bad. Now this has a full tank at this moment because I've literally just filled it up and now I need to remortgage. But it is 214 kilograms. Now I know that sounds quite a lot on paper, but it really does wear its weight well. Oh God, that was a bit of a tongue twister. So you really don't feel like it's all that heavy. But like I say, if you're somebody that wants to get both feet down, that's kind of what you're working with. But I just kind of sit slightly off the seat and that's absolutely fine for me. Speaking of tank and filling up and having to remortgage, this is a 16.2 litre tank. So it can hold a decent amount of fuel. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you what it's like to push it around. If you guys watch my walk around videos a lot, you're probably very bored of this bit, but it does give an indication to people that maybe aren't super confident in manhandling a bike that it is super possible because if I can do it, anyone can. It's quite an easy bike to push backwards because you can pop your palm on the back plastics. And it's very, very easy 
just to walk with. So one of the things that I haven't talked about yet is the five inch TFT display with Bluetooth connectivity. So I'm going to show you the dash. Hopefully there's not too much glare. I do apologize if there is. So first we'll start with this little yellow symbol here. That just shows that the bike side stand is down. Here you've got your fuel, you've got your revs around here, your miles an hour, nice and big. Then here you've got your mode. So you have a mode button on the switch gear. You can adjust this on the fly. So if you press the mode button, you can change it to standard, rain, user or sport. And you can also see in the three little circles below it, hopefully, you've got P for power, E for engine braking and T for torque. Here you have your gear indicator. It's currently green to show that you're in neutral and you have your quick shifter activated. It's bi-directional, hence the up and down symbol, which again does come with the black edition as standard. Now at the bottom here, you've got some information. You can press the across button and it will shuffle through the line at the bottom so that you can see different pieces of information and you can select that information. I was having a mess around with it, hence why these boxes are empty, but you can fill those if you want. So I have set this dash so that it has a black background, almost in night mode, just because I think it looks aesthetically great with the black edition, but you can change that in the settings, which is quite a nice touch. So how do we get into the settings? Here you have these buttons, you press and hold that to the right, and then you'll get this screen up. Now on this screen, you've got four different categories. You have function, display, general, and service. So in function, you have riding mode. Given the fact that you have a user mode, this is where this riding mode setting comes into its own. You've got different levels of adjustability that you can fine tune. So again, you have the power, engine braking and torque. And you can just set that how you want. To come out of this, you just press and hold it back that way. The next one on the list is quick shifter. So this is pretty cool, I think. You can choose whether you have it soft, medium or hard and you can make the up one different from the down one if you want which i think is pretty pretty cool and pretty crazy and i haven't seen that level of adjustability of a shifter before so i think that's pretty cool then if we go down to shift point that basically you can just see you know at what rpm you want to shift the shift lights come on and you can switch that off if you don't like it Self-cancelling turn signals, now you can select on or off. I think this is quite cool because I personally really like self-cancelling indicators. Because I personally really like self-cancelling indicators and I could really do with all the help I can get. But some people don't like the fact that the bike decides when to cancel them and they like to do it themselves. So I think it's really cool that you can adjust that via the dash. Coming down here, you've got a Trip A Auto Reset and then you've got the Honda Immobilizer system as well, which you can have on or off. Going back across, you've got Display. Now you have Display Type. This, I think, is really cool. So I've currently got it in Type 4. Let me just see if I can get a better, better angle on this. In this, you can have it as this or this. But so far, I kind of like all of them. So I'm just going to leave it in four. Brightness, so you've got an auto setting or you have all the way up to eight here. So it just depends how bright you want that. If you go on background, you can choose whether you want it black, white, metallic or auto. If you have it in auto, if you go into the dark, it makes it a black screen if you're riding in the daylight it's bright white 
but I'm just going to keep it in black because I really, really like that look. Oh, still on display. Favourite information. So this is what I meant before about the line at the bottom. So I was messing around with it and have blank. But you can go across and you can really just fine tune what you want to see on here, which I think is pretty cool. And you can go across, go down, and change all three. If we go back, use a letter. So it says CB1000R. If you wanted to be super vain, you could put your name in there or whatever. But if we go back and we go across, that is where you would see that. So if we go back here and finish off the settings, general, I'm not going to go into these, but you have date and time, unit, language, restore default and Bluetooth pairing reset. And then if you go down here, you've got service. So you've got maintenance, equipment, quick shifter initialize, DTC and regulatory. So there are a few bits and bats to have a mess around with in there. Speedy dog. So I think that's pretty much covered the dash. So one of the things that I forgot to mention right at the beginning of this video, which I probably should have mentioned, is the price. Now the price on this bike is £13,099. That was at the time of this video. So if you're watching this video from the future, obviously things may have changed. But as it stands right now, that is the price of this bike. And you know what, I think it's a pretty good price considering that you've got a quick shifter and auto blipper, you've got that gorgeous blacked out aesthetic. I mean, I'm just a bit of a sucker for things that are blacked out and stealthy. So yeah, it definitely tickles my pickle. So I think one of the cool things about doing this video on the Honda CB1000R Black Edition is I can actually talk about both of my channel sponsors in this video. So. All Hondas get a free Data Tool Stealth S5 tracker when you buy one from new. And as an extra added benefit, the Africa Twin, the CB1000R and the Fireblade come with 12 months free subscription. So with a tracker, the Honda dealership may charge you £99 for fitting, but you know, you might be able to hustle that in the deal of some kind, who knows. It depends how good your negotiating skills are, which is why this key has a fob. Now it's never ideal to keep a fob on with the key because obviously if somebody swipes your key at a petrol station and rides off, data tool will need to know somehow that you are being separated from the bike. And that is what this fob does. So you keep this fob on your person. If someone rides off with your bike, they sense with the satellites that the bike has been separated from the fob and boom, that is when they come into effect and help you out. Now, moving on to an insurance quote, which is something that I provide you guys an example of in my walk around videos. You guys know that Bikeshare are a title sponsor of my YouTube channel. They make it possible for me to go full time and really pursue this as my dream job. So to give you an idea, I ask the guys at Bikeshare, five star rated insurance broker, what it would cost me for a year, fully comprehensive, based on the fact that I'm 30 years old, I am a woman and I live in Bolton. And they came back to me on this with a quote of £393. Now that quote does include £100,000 worth of legal cover just in case I was unfortunate enough to need it, which, fingers crossed, I won't be. So again, a massive thank you to Nick at Bikeshare who provided me with that quote, because I just think the more quotes I can give you guys on the different bikes that I review, the more you guys can get an idea of what it would cost to insure me on these different bikes.
which may give you an idea of what the more expensive bikes are to insure versus the cheaper bikes to insure. Hello everybody, that concludes my walk round video on the Honda CB1000 uh, Black Edition. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you have, please consider hitting the subscribe button and also if you'd like to like the video and maybe comment, it all helps my channel and I'm super grateful for it. Okay, so on that note, I guess it's time to warm up this baby and go home. <laughs>